Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. Good morning, Dr. Paul. How are you this morning? Very good. Yeah. You've been paying attention to the news? Yeah, I'm pretty scared. <laughs> there was some Republican political news last night and some Democratic political news last yeah. night. But we don't follow politics no. unless they're important, yeah. unless it affects the economy. <laughs> and nothing they do would affect the economy because we're in a free market economy and we let uh, you know, interest rates be market oriented <laughs> and we don't have to worry about things. We have sound money and uh, freedom of choice. So, but every once in a while they'll do something and they'll, they'll mess it up. But anyway, there was a political event last night and, uh, and you know, uh, you recall, and we still are at times critical about the police when they have no knock break-ins yeah. and search and thing, yeah. they don't have search warrants and abuse, uh, you know, when they do. And there was a fair amount of that. Oh, yeah. uh, but I think the riots of uh, what was going on in the inner city and denying even decent police yeah. <laughs> uh, defense, that sort of has changed. We don't hear so much about that. But we still have the same problem of uh, abuse of the police. And I remember being taught uh, as a kid, I don't know who my teacher was, but they said the worst thing to have is a crooked policeman, yeah. you know, and uh, I think we have some crooked uh, federal policemen. And what I'm talking about, by, because well, we certainly don't have any policemen carrying guns from the federal government, you know, yeah. because that's not in, in the Constitution, except for a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. And uh, there'll be uh, a, a few more added to that now that they're going to give more guns uh, to uh, to the uh, the the uh, IRS agents. But the police I'm talking about right now, uh, we've talked a lot about the CIA and how they uh, uh, abuse, uh, abuse their police powers by uh, running roughshod in secret over foreign policy that before you know it, we're in a war, yeah. which is going on right now, you know, the events. We actually get involved in coups and things like that. But what we want to talk now for a minute about it is uh, this whole thing about uh, Trump is a suspect now, yeah. and he's probably they're they're arguing the Democrats, and they would never lie. Yeah, you know, they would never lie. They they're arguing that he's done some very very bad things, and uh, I think I read one place where they had forty agents go out, yeah. you know, to raid his place, and uh, one person was just caught with a a rifle, yeah. you know, and. and Trump wasn't even in there, but the whole thing is, he went in, they went in there and took his safe and everything. So he must have committed a very, very bad crime <laughs> for that to happen. But for some reason, as we go along with this discussion, I'd like to make the point, I don't know whether the Democrats are going to be all that happy when the dust settles. Yeah, it's pretty, un it's unprecedented for sure to have an FBI, as you say, kind of a no-knock rate on a former president. And you would ask, well, what, what, was he, what has he done? You know, is he video himself smoking crack cocaine? No, no, that was the president's <laughs> oh, son, yeah. you know, or, or having other activities. So I think this is going to be an iconic photo. If we can put this first one up. This is the entrance of Trump's house. And here is a federal agent with a machine gun at the entrance to Trump's house. What was it they were looking for? Well, they were looking for some presidential papers that hadn't been turned into the National Archives yet. That was the sum total of, the, of what they were doing by sending these armed agents to break into his house. As you say, they literally brought a safe cracker and they broke into his safe. It was empty. There was nothing in it. So this whole idea that you send in these, uh, these armed federal agents with machine guns to get some presidential papers, I don't know, I don't know what the political fallout is going to be from this. Well, I, I think it could be very negative. Remember, <clears throat> and I know you do, is what happened when they decided to use uh, uh, COVID as an instrument for uh, cracking down on the people's liberties, and that turned into be a monster. But there was a time when the people turned against that, and right now, most people know that it was a farce, and they're, they've backed away from that, yet they, they're still... The far left is still trying. They're they're looking to have lockdowns over <laughs> over monkeypox and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. But uh, the the lies the the lies that are told and and this effort. But I think just like they got tired of the lockdown with COVID, 
I think the people are going to get tired of this stuff too, yeah. because uh, you, you know so, so many challenges. My my theory is, and this is a personal theory, is why I think that the Democrats haven't achieved a whole lot, is because they have a motivation. <clears throat> Most people, when they go to town and try to do good things and bad things, they're motivated for something. The Democrats. Uh, are motivated. I said at one time they were just jealous that this guy won. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was politically incorrect and the people liked him. Oh, yeah. that has to be a mistake. And and the Democrats decide they're going to hate him. And the hatred just grows and grows. Yeah. And now they say, you know, and then a bunch of Republicans said, anybody but Trump, you know. And this hatred persists. And, uh, and, and I think the people are going to wake up and say, well, really, once they realized all these papers were going to the uh, uh, to the government storage and to, and to, to uh, the archives. Yeah. So what, what were they looking for? They weren't looking for how he wasn't charged with a crime. But this has been going on and yeah. on. Just think of the investigations and the money that he and the political uh, uh, allies had to spend just to cancel out their lives yeah. and, and uh, have turned around to all the charges made against Trump, turned out that they were doing exactly the same thing, you know, that what they were charging Trump with. And so I think the people are tired of that. The people don't believe what the government says. But the big question is, uh, I, I think the people who really, really hate won't change. They're not going to change. But I think the people, uh, you know, the, the, the normal people, and the people who have at least an open mind will hear about it. They changed their mind on lockdown when yeah. it got overbearing. And I think this type of stuff is going to be overbearing. But, uh, you know, it depends on what the Republicans do with this. The Republicans haven't always been, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, uh, pure at heart, you know, in what they do. But I, I would think, uh, I'm predicting that this will backfire on them. I think the whole thing smacks of desperation. I mean, you keep, how long have we been hearing, oh, Trump's going to be in an orange jumpsuit pretty soon? You know, they're going to arrest him. They're going to arrest him. So the January 6th commission, uh, I think, has basically come, up with, come out empty-handed. They keep threatening he's going to be arrested. They've got, looks like they've got nothing. They've got nothing that'll stick. So they send out these federal agents to try to find something desperate, some paper. Maybe, maybe uh, Trump scratched on, an, on a napkin. Let's do let's <laughs> let's start a coup or whatever. Let's have an insurgency. Um, that's what they were looking for. But it does it does seem like it's the January 6th commission. It's the arrest Trump. Keep him from running, which makes you wonder what they're what they're afraid of. Um, here's a here's a clip from Ron DeSantis, because, of course, the Mar-a-Lago is in Florida. He says the raid of Mar-a-Lago is another escalation in the weaponization of federal agencies against the regime's political opponents while people like Hunter Biden get treated with kid gloves. Good point. Now the regime is getting another 87,000 IRS agents to wield against his adversaries, Banana Republic. Pretty strong statement, pretty good statement. He talks about the use of federal agencies to attack political opponents. Well, Dr. Paul, I've got a surprise clip, a blast from the past. A friend of mine, Ryan Dawson, sent this to me this morning. Let's watch this. Here's another person talking about the FBI being used to hunt down political opponents. This is a video clip from 1988, a certain candidate called Ron Paul. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, you know, most of our history, we didn't, didn't have those institutions. The FBI came in uh, during the First World War. And interestingly enough, the one thing that Woodrow Wilson did, he used the FBI to spy on American citizens and actually arrest them if they disagreed with his foreign policy about going to war in Europe. And isn't it interesting how recent they used it in the Vietnam era? Democrats used it there. Republicans used the FBI to spy on a hundred different groups in this country, including the churches, who disagree with the policy in uh, Central America. It almost looks like the FBI was designed to spy on Americans who might be disagreeing uh, with policy, especially the foreign policy. So the FBI, although I don't think I could condemn everything they've ever done, because I'm sure uh, some of the investigations and investigation of crime uh, has been beneficial, but that could be accomplished through Justice Department within our states. We wouldn't reject that uh, portion of it. But I think the, the FBI has uh, kept and continues to keep a lot of records on a lot of individuals. The CIA has only been here since 1947. Their record is lousy. I mean, just think of the CIA used by the Democratic uh, administration to murder. 
So that was long, Ooh. but worth it. <laughs> you know, I agree with. I want to vote for that guy. I don't think I'm going to change my mind on that one. <laughs> I want to so, vote for that guy. So they've been doing it a while, I guess, is the message yeah, that we, that we see uh, here. And that means that crooked cops were, have been around for a long It's probably historic. Yeah. But what we're dealing with is here, you know, here and now. You know, I was just, I, I know you have another thought, but I was thinking that, you know, how are they going to work Hillary into this, yeah. you know? And, you know, it, it's not complicated. Uh, I would say about 90 percent of the Democrats don't want to see anything to do with Biden. And I don't think his tremendous successes here yeah. are going to erase that. So guess what? Hillary is going to be out there. Can you imagine <laughs> Trump and Hillary running again oh. and going back and forth on this thing? So, Pop the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking back, okay, say Trump took some classified documents or whatever, or didn't turn them back in. Think, where did that happen in the past, and what happened to the people who did that? Well, it wasn't that long ago, and I know you remember this, Dr. Paul. Let's put up this next clip. This was back in 2003. Remember Sandy Berger? He was the, uh, he was the um, uh, President Clinton's national security advisor. He went into the National Archives, that's what we're talking about, National Archives, he stuffed some documents in his sock. He hid them under a construction trailer. Then he snipped them up with scissors to try to hide them because he was going to appear before the 9-11 Commission to talk about warnings that they had been getting, uh, that Clinton had been getting, uh, that there was going to be an attack. So this is pretty blatant. He goes in there, he hides him in his sock, he rips him up, he, he, he destroys this. So what happened to him? Did they raid his house? No, he wasn't even arrested. Put up the next one if you, um, you can. He just said it's an honest mistake. No big deal. He wasn't arrested. And in the end, he did have to pay a fine and he had to do a little community service. He may have been over here on the 288 picking up trash at one point. Who knows? But he got a slap on the wrist for literally destroying potentially incriminating documents from the National Archive. Trump, maybe he's got a couple boxes somewhere. Machine gun federal agents. Yeah, the way I look at this. Yeah, it could be an honest mistake, but he doesn't even believe in truth. Yeah. So, uh, if, you know, if it doesn't work out quite so well, it's just a mistake. It has nothing to do with doing the right thing, yeah. you know, that's existing. Well, I guess we should move on because we, you know, another day, another few billion dollars. Uh, let's put up that next clip. The biggest, I think, tranche yet of money sent over to Ukraine, uh, even as that war continues to go very badly. And even as corruption continues to be evident in the people that we are giving money to, the Biden administration is not dissuaded from giving even more of our money. $5.5 billion. And from that money, if we can put on the next one, $4.5 billion is for budgetary support. I'm really glad, Dr. Paul, that we don't have a recession because otherwise that money might have come in handy to help us out. Boy, that's for sure. You know, they're, they're worrying. In a way, it's a border war, a war going on over there. You, you know, uh, where are Ukraine's borders with Russia and all this. And, you know, some people might even argue that a little bit of this money, of course, uh, most of it should go back to the taxpayers. But if you're going to have $4.5 billion, why, people love this when they hear it. Why don't they spend it looking at our borders yeah. and maybe trying to figure out that problem? Our and border. boy, I'll tell you what, about 80% of Americans or more would agree with that. And that's what that's one thing that, uh, you know, even the lefties are starting to do, starting to realize. As soon as they start seeing people bussing into their district, that's why, that's why the uh, the people have become a problem in Texas. Why going to send anything up to Washington? Maybe San Francisco will open up their doors. Maybe <laughs> Hollywood, uh, Hollywood will come along yeah. and say, "Send them over to us. We we uh, will take care of them." Yeah. Well, it's I, I just can't believe that this will be a political winner at the end of the day. You know, we we talked yesterday a little bit about the CBS report that they promptly disappeared which is that 70% of the weapons that we send over there are not getting to where they should be. And in fact, I saw some clips from that forbidden uh, CBS report. He interviewed, they interviewed some, a woman, an expert down there, saying that we have no idea where these weapons are going. Maybe they'll turn up in Syria. Maybe they'll turn up uh, anywhere. So I just can't believe, Dr. Paul, that this will continue to be a political winner for the Biden administration, especially as Americans keep feeling the pinch uh, of inflation to keep sending billions of dollars for their budget while ours is getting attacked. You know, it's, uh, 
it might uh, be a benefit to maintaining the dollar as the reserve currency of the world because these weapons, when they're exchanged, and when you measure this, they measure it in U.S. dollars, and here they're selling these weapons here and there. It's almost like a different world, uh, strange uh, and, and, and remote from the average person who needs to uh, be working in a, free, a, a freer environment. No, it's going to be all these weapons. The weapons become, uh, you know, uh, uh, almost like money as they transfer them, but they're based in dollars. And it, the payment is due, the payment is coming due, and, the, and our taxpayers of America ultimately will be paying it. I think they're right now in the middle, in the early stages of paying for these excesses that have been going on for a good many years. And as we always say, the, the fact that these weapons are not being tracked at all, I think it makes commercial air travel much, much more dangerous, especially in Europe and elsewhere, the Middle East. You've got these rockets that can blow commercial jet uh, planes out of the air, flying, falling into the hands of who knows what, who knows who. I mean, maybe that's what the CIA wants. You always say, and I think very correctly, that they want chaos. And there's no better way to get chaos than to dump tons and tons of weapons all over the world. Yeah. It and it, and it moves quickly. I was, I was impressed with how quickly the weapons went from Lib Libya up to uh, Syria. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, well, we can use them someplace else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Pay off the politicians. So. Well, here's an interesting thing, kind of in a related way, and this is our, our last uh, story for the day. If we can put that next one on. All of a sudden, now, now this is from Politico. I've seen one in the Washington Post and MSN. All of a sudden, the mainstream media is putting out story after story about Biden's victories stacking up great victories. And this one says, Biden is suddenly piling up wins. Can the Dems make it stick? And you noticed this this morning. You looked a little bit beyond the headlines. And these quote-unquote great wins were basically all massive spending bills Everyone. going through a Democrat-controlled Congress. Yeah, even, even the one that is supposed to Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. That, that's the biggest farce in the world. And uh, spending billions and billions of dollars that has to be printed by the Federal Reserve to cover it. And uh, they, th they think that is... And, and they, they don't, uh, they do it with a straight face. This is an inflation reduction yeah. bill. But there were, there was a, they were going to solve the problem of health care and climate change. And uh, also, and we would always do it by taxing the rich. And that would solve the problem. But then it was, it didn't take very long where some credible uh, budgeteer people went and looked at it. And they said, do you know what? Most of it's going to come out of the pockets of the middle class, yeah. and and then which is it? You know, is a, is another tax on the people? You know, and uh, it, it's amazing that they still bother. I guess the credibility is that you have to pretend that you're paying for things and you have a tax, but but uh, really the the uh, taxes are always paid by debt, and uh, I always I think compare it to because it it just uh, so very much surprised me when I found out that. Uh, uh, we paid for World War II mostly by I inflation because I can remember as as I delivered newspapers in Pittsburgh, we were always taught to collect quarters and put them in to get a $25 war bond issue and you had to get up to $17.50 and <laughs> when you did that and it was... It was the uh, obedience and uh, getting you in the war spirit it had nothing to do with financing the war, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and brought people together because we were all in it together. But uh, now they, they, they continue to do a bit of that stuff, uh, pretending that they're paying for this, yeah. and they call it that. And the other, the other thing that they pretend, too, is they, they'd say to us, Ron, you, you know this. We're making an investment. Investment, that's a great word, yeah. <laughs> and then they spend it, yeah, investment in corruption. <laughs> yeah. I should try that with my wife next time I go on Amazon and buy stuff I don't need. It's just an investment. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you look down a little bit in this Politico article and it talks about, you know, Biden's string of victories. And then they do have to make the point. All of these quote-unquote victories have happened while the president's been sidelined. He's had 28 shots, and he's got COVID 148 times. It keeps coming back. Can't get rid of it no matter what he does. Takes more pills, gets more COVID. So basically, it's hard for him to take credit, I think, for these quote-unquote victories of, of you know, passing these spending bills. And as we have seen, and maybe it will change, but as of right now, the, 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 the polling numbers of job approval have not 
follow these great victories of his? No, it's not likely to. And <clears throat> it, it might be representing a, a sea change in attitudes, uh, because I talk so often about the sea change in attitudes that finally ended that disastrous war in the 1960s, the people finally just said enough is enough. Now, did the politicians <clears throat> in Washington lead the charge and come up with a better foreign policy? Did a president do that? No. Uh, Nixon was elected, you know, because he was critical of the Vietnam War. And I think 35,000 American people were killed after yeah. he got in the office. Just goes on and on. It's just so criminal uh, of what what they do. They just spend the money and totally ignore what is the right thing to do. So, and, and I, I think though the people finally woke up demonstrated in the streets and finally uh, oh people are getting uh, nervous about this war and then the war ended yeah you know the people and my goal has always been uh, and I, I made a concerted effort with your help uh, in the early part of this century is why don't we work on preventing it yeah. you know so you don't have to wait and, and yet what what did it what good did it do I don't know whether it did any good. Somebody else will decide that. But it, it, it didn't speed things up. It ended up that the war we tried to stop it lasted 20 years, yeah. you know, <laughs> probably still going on. <laughs> In some ways. Well, as much as I'm not happy about police raids and, you know, knocking on uh, Trump's door with machine guns, I have to say <laughs> it's probably going to be good for business. So I'm going to close if we have that bonus clip to remind everyone of the name of our September conference, Anatomy of a Police State. And that's exactly what we titled today's program, Police State, because these are police state tactics. This is what we're seeing. So you will want to join us on September 3rd. You can get your tickets by going to ronpaulinstitute.org and clicking a link on the upper right saying, get your tickets for the RPI Washington Conference. Police State, it's unfolding right in front of, it, in front of us. That's what we're gonna be talking about. So get those tickets while they last. Very good. Well, and you know, once again, uh, our goal is to get information that we can rely on and do our very best to understand what is actually true. And that is not easy because there's a lot of people that don't believe that truth even exists. And if it does, they have to circumvent it for political and power reasons. And, and they do that. But all this, this so much nonsense that we had to, you know, review it, it just today, you know, about the war efforts going on and uh, the spending, spending huge amounts of money to stop inflation. I mean, it's so ri ridiculous. And uh, people say, well, what is, and then they argue about inflation. Well, it is a little confusing. So we're going to change the definition of what a depression and a recession is. They just change this. Everything is already. Right. They do not have a unit of account socially and morally, and they don't have a unit of account in the financial system. And until you have an anchor, you, this is this is chaos. And that's what that's what we get. And the big question is: Is would I, I for the longest time, I I just wouldn't even touch the thought that uh, there was some effort to. Uh, provoke and get us involved in World War One and World War Two. That, that, that's beyond, you know, any comprehension. But, you know, there's so much evidence for that. And I think there'd be people who, who would, uh, because they've stated it, they're more blunt. You know, the, the Marxist system has always said that they have to rebuild, but we have to get rid of this capitalism stuff. Well, it looks like we don't have much capital, capitalism to really get rid of, but uh, we still have a problem. We have a remnant of our freedom lovers, and we do have, in spite of all our restrictions, we still can speak out and motivate people. And we also see some openings, just like as bad as COVID and the lockdowns were, people did uh, uh, become more awakened about what was happening. And right now, I think they see through the nonsense that you can't solve the problem of, uh, uh, of uh, inflation if you continue to spend money, run up debt, and then print the money to pay for the problems. And then the, uh, uh, the, only, the, the real tax is passed on by higher prices to the middle class. That is not complicated. And uh, it, it's something that 
everybody has been uh, not taught. That is what is ignored in our schools, grade schools on up, that uh, what, what inflation is all about. Oh, prices are going up. Labor unions demanding too much wa wages. <clears throat> the businessman, too much profits. We need to restrict all this. And it's, it's a misconception, it's telling lies that people operate on. So you have, uh, I, I guess some of them aren't quite as vicious, but lying about the economy and the role of government and what government can do is I think it's great that people are questioning what they're hearing from the government. And I certainly think the people ought to question and watch carefully and look at this very carefully about where is the justification for opening up the doors to what they did with uh, Trump's home by barging in there. That, that deserves a review and, and there's gonna be a chance. I think uh, in a couple of months, people are gonna have a say about that. They're certainly gonna have a say about the borders and they're gonna have a say about uh, the lockdowns that uh, they detested so much. I do wanna thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Uh, please come back soon.